Hi, everyone. Welcome to True Disabled Story. My name is Nico, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm a white man with floppy blonde hair, large blue and brown spectacles, and a black headset around my head. I'm also wearing a short sleeve button-up t-shirt with a white background and colorful dinosaurs on it underneath a open golden zip-up hoodie. I'm seated against a green wall and further back an orange wall. That's my kitchen. Like about 25% of the U.S. population and a full 17% of Philadelphians, I'm disabled. Whether we look locally, nationally, or globally, disabled communities are full of dynamic, diverse, and frankly delightful people with their own stories to tell. As many of you know, I was born disabled. I've never known differently, and I probably always will be disabled. So when I run into other disabled people in my personal, professional, or civic life, I'm eager to hear their perspectives and their stories. Today's guest is someone who I have a long history with, my great friend, Jay. Jay and I actually share the same disability. Despite that, we might have different perspectives and opinions based upon our life experiences, and I can't wait to get started. Hi, Jay, how are you doing? Good afternoon, Nico. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Jay Trevetti. I go. I also go by he, him pronouns. Uh, I am seated in front of a white wall with a picture of uh, one of our most important goddesses in our Hindu religion. Uh, I am. I also have an, behind me a poster of our temple in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Uh, I am wearing a gray shirt with a um with um with a picture of Darth Vader and Princess Leia from one of our most favorite and popular movies, Star Wars Episode Four, A New Hope. And what is Darth Vader saying? And Darth Vader is telling Princess Leia, "Give me some push. Give me some space. Not your you're a part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor." And uh, I am wearing black headphones, and I am I have a happy expression on my face because Nick has a happy expression, and I'm so glad to be seated, uh, and talking to my good friend Nico Myre. and also I have a tracheostomy, which is very different from what Nico uh, has. Nico does not have a trach, but I have been trach for life, and I also have. Uh, a I has a disability called congenital central hyperventilation syndrome. Thank you. All right, Jay, that was very comprehensive. Thanks. Let's get into it. What was your path to diagnosis like, old friend? Was this a surprise or something maybe uh, you and your family had expected? Paint that picture for us. Sure. So, um, the path to my diagnosis, um, I would say like, that I think this was something that we did not expect. I, I would have to, uh, one thing I would have to say is no, nobody expects to be disabled. Uh, you know, being disabled could happen uh, from an accident or something that's genetic. Uh, obviously, you know, we all, all three of us were, you know, tested I, and I believe uh, both my parents were not diagnosed, so it was it is such a blessing to know that they are very much normal. Uh, however, in our however, it was not expected that I would be diagnosed at birth with this syndrome. Uh, you know, and I think once my family found out that I was diagnosed, uh, you know, you know their lives have had changed because, you know, they had to deal with nursing, you know, it was also a matter of, you know, uh, leaving their job, leaving their jobs. Uh, example being my own mother, she, once, once she found out that I was diagnosed, uh, she had to, you know, leave her job and, and, you know, find something that is more flexible and more suitable. And right now she's in teaching and, you know, she has taught part-time and, and currently full-time, you know, and, you know, as, you know, she worked in colleges, you know, she would have to, you know, take me to, to school and, 
you know, have have me in the care of, you know, her faculty members. Um, and that's, that's, you know, something that's not really easy to do. Um, and same thing with the nursing, you know, when it, you know, nursing, that can be a, a really, you know, hard thing to work with. It can also have a financial impact. You know, nursing is not very cheap. It's, it's very expensive. You have to find nursing. And if the nurses are not available, you would have to stay home. Um, you know, right now, I don't, I feel like I don't have to worry about that because, you know, I don't get nursing. The only nursing that I get in my home is, you know, monthly, monthly nurse rent checks, but that's about it. Uh, but however, one of the, one of the things that uh, is one of the things that that I do, you know, experience is uh, hospital hospitalization, and those are things that that cannot be controlled. In our diagnosis, is something that cannot be controlled. Uh, it cannot be stopped. There is no treatment, uh, and the unfortunate part is that you could easily feel dizzy or you could easily fall down. You could easily faint at any time. You know, there are, there are traumas that you might have that may cause you to have these, these faint spells and it could, it's all part of the diagnosis. You know, pneumonia, COVID, uh, you know, any anything having to do with respiratory, your CO2 levels, your oxygen levels, your your vent your vent your vent settings, all of that is a contribution, and it is all it is, it it's part of our lives, and uh, that's that's what you know. That's that's reality. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you touched on something that's very important, simply because it is so common for people with CCHS respiratory illnesses like uh, the flu, or even particularly bad allergies, right? I don't mess with allergies. Uh, it's important to keep those airways clear, especially for us. Good reminder. So tell us a little bit more about how the way you treated your CCHS throughout your life, because you're, you're in your 30s now. Tell us more about the way CCHS and how you treat it throughout your life impacted your life, right? Did you have a nurse at school? Did you have medical equipment with you at school? Uh, when you went to school, were there things that you, you couldn't do? How did you explain this to, to friends that you made? So many questions, right? Yes, thank you. I, you know, I feel like the CCHS as a, as a whole has, ha, has definitely made a, a, a social impact uh, on my life. I would say that you know, when I was in school, um, and this is when I went to high school, middle school, kindergarten, you name it, you know, all the kids that I met, you know, I felt like they were all very normal. Uh, and I felt like nobody really understood the, the diagnosis, you know, they really didn't, you know, want me as part of the social psych, I guess. Uh, because you know, a, as you and I very much know, uh, we our social our social activities are somewhat limited, right? I mean, there is a time in uh, there is a time where you have to go, you have a sleep schedule, and that's something you can't control, right? You know, I see all these kids, uh, I see all these kids, you know go up, have a gathering, go out, go out for, you know, a prom or sleepovers or what have you. That is something I could not do, uh, you know, and it, and it also played a role in, in a, in a relationship type of aspect, right? You know, you know, again, I, I spoke about this idea about having normal friends, you know, and this idea about having a relationship, you know, that's something that, that really made an impact. Uh, I never really got got to have that experience. Um, 
And I guess I would say the same thing for college, I guess. I never really had that experience. Um, however, my social activities somewhat were different when I went to college. You know, sometimes I would get involved in some of the college activities, which I was not prohibited from because, you know, my mom would always be there. I would tell her that, look, I'm just going to the to this part of the college to participate in in some activities, whether you have your World Diversity Day, your um, your um, college college day, or whatever kind of celebration they have during the as classes were taking place. You know, sometimes I would get involved, and I felt like I would be gaining something. I would meet other college students. I would talk to the faculty, and this really gave me that social uh, social uh, skill, I believe. Um, you know, and, and even so today, right today, I have more social activity because I'm involved in things that I love doing, right? You have, uh, the CCHS advocacy groups, which you and I are both advocates of. We, we talk to a lot of patients with, C with CCHS or even their, uh, parents themselves. I, uh, I have that ability to talk to people in our in our network because we all have a good understanding of where where we've where we have you know what kinds of experience we've had with our life uh being disabled we understand what kind what the challenges are we all have that similarity you know yes we may sh we like you say we may have disagreements or agreements but you know we all share the same thing we all have that understanding and and that's the um and also uh and i think this is also something that and i also talk about this in the, the diversity group is this idea of um impact on my own religion you know i and i don't i'm i don't want to sound uh uh, I don't. I don't think racist is a word, but I, I think, I think what, I think one of the things that I wish people, people in religious organizations would would understand is, you yourself have people who are just have uh, attendees who are disabled come to your organization, and you fail to talk about. The disability challenges that are that is facing our world today. Instead, you are talking about re religious discussion and not about what's happening in the world today. That I think is a uh, a that I think is not very. Um, I'm not, I don't know what the word is. I don't think that's a very good idea. Um, but I think that's how, that's how CCHS has made an impact on my own life. Thanks, I appreciate that. I noticed you use this word normal uh, about two or three times in, in your response. And I think you phrase it kind of as something opposite CCHS, right? There's having CCHS, and then there's being normal. But I would kind of assert, right, that you can live a, a pretty normal life with CCHS. Uh, just because you have CCHS doesn't mean like the laundry doesn't have to get done still or uh, the dog doesn't need walking. Uh, I believe a normal life is, is really possible with CCHS. I really appreciated also that you mentioned um, how CCHS has affected has affected your faith. I don't know a whole lot about like Hinduism, right? Uh, but what what does Hinduism generally say about disabled people? I I think I think in in our culture we uh -huh. I think in our culture I think that it doesn't. I guess, I guess what I would have, I guess in our Hindu culture, you know, 
it just everything is by luck. Okay. Right. I mean, I I think that's the norm I've seen. Uh, it's all about luck. You know, it, we. You know, again, it it's it it's nobody's fault that I was diagnosed. Okay. Um, it is unexpected. Um, and and one thing I did forget to uh, disclose about uh, in my answer to your question is that, you know. Work wise, it has someone has a po has a positive impact, work wise because you know even though, um, you know I we we live with CCHS, we can still function as a normal citizen. We can we can hold down full time jobs while we are living with the diagnosis, and we can learn about we can learn very uh we can we can gain more skills uh, while being diagnosed uh again that social act that social uh activity that social impact uh again you have uh that financial impact the more you work the more uh uh money goes into your pocket right whether you are disabled or not right and i think that's what's so great about my life is that even though I am disabled, I haven't it I have not been limited to working certain places. I can work anywhere as long as the environment is safe enough for me to work in. And that's I'm so fortunate that today I can work two jobs. You know, I didn't think that I could work two jobs before because I just couldn't handle it. I didn't think I could, I didn't think I would be able to work two jobs because of the way of my diagnosis, but I'm so glad that today I can work not only in a, in a big company, which is very popular today, but in an organization where you have, uh, you have um, employees or bosses who share who may not have the same experience, but have a similar experience in their family and can understand what it is like to live with a diagnosis. So that that's how, that's what I want to add in my answer. It sounds like CCHS has had a significant impact on all aspects of your life growing up. Thank you for your honesty. I really appreciate that. Welcome. Let me ask you something also, too, before we move on to our third question. Uh -huh. You mentioned not going to, to prom and yeah. be, because you had CCHS. Do you recall a bit more about that? Because I went to my prom and I didn't really have any, any issues with it. That, that's a really good question. Um, I think, again, it, go, it all goes back to having that relationship, right? And I think... Again, I had said, I had mentioned that, you know, in high school, you know, I was not very much, I was not understood. Nobody really took me seriously. Uh, you know, nobody wanted to be my friend because, you know, I was different. You know, I just, I just had, I was not, you know, I was not acting in certain, in good faith. I was not behaving a certain way and it's not that I it's, it's not that I didn't want to behave properly it's just that I just wanted to have a normal fun I know I, I just wanted to have a normal life like everyone else where you can have you can have friends and you can go to places with them and all that but you know being after you know when you're diagnosed you only have a you only have certain limitations and that's just how it was. And so what, what can you do, right? You can't change the past. Well, that is true. We can't change the past. Uh, I'm glad that you got uh, more of a community, more friends as, as you got older though, all things in time, if it helps at all, my own wife did not go to her prom simply because she wasn't interested. Uh, and she also lived at home until her late 20s. So uh, 
we got some support there. All right, friend, on to happier topics. If you could give another member of the CCHS community one bit of advice, or even if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would you say? You know, looking at all the things that, you know, we've talked about in the diversity group and with the CCHS community, if I had to give anyone advice, it would be, um, it would be two things. Uh, well, actually, it would. I would have to say, it would have to be somewhat of a compliment. I would think, and I wanted to uh, provide a compliment, if I may, into this into our meeting because I think, I think it should be said, if you don't mind. Um, for those who are listening. Uh, and to those families in the CCHS community, um, for the kids who have, who, for those who are, uh, who have siblings, uh, I want to let you know that you're very lucky to have brothers and sisters who can take care of you, and who have, who are there to, uh, you know, help your parents because. You know, when it comes to kids who have only who are who have who are raised as an only child, you know, they don't have that additional. We don't have that additional security, and we only are dependent upon our parents. And what what I would say is that if I had to give any advice to myself, it would be that you know. I think one of the, it, it's very hard to give advice to myself. I think, you know, being born an only child has been somewhat of a challenge, I think. Uh, you know, there have been times where I sit down with my parents and I and I tell them that, you know, you know, sometimes I wish that I wish that, you know, we had someone in our family who would take some of the worry off my parents because, you know, when, because right now, as it stands, it is my parents who have to worry about me because they're, they're the ones looking out for my safety. They're the ones looking after my security. They're the ones looking after my health. And it is, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm going to be 33 years old this year. Uh, I, I'm not really sure how long I can, you know, live, uh, live by myself. You know, it's it is very challenging. Um, yes, I have, uh, cousins, but you know, they are, they are in different status now. They are married, and it is, we are not. We are no, we are no longer on speaking terms, and it's very hard to, it, it is very hard to work with that because you know we hardly even talk and we, we I, I feel like I feel like I'm being shut out and and it, it's somewhat it's heartbreaking but somewhat I feel like even though I, I feel like I'm being shut out I at the same time I feel like I, I feel less worrisome because I, I'm like okay so what she she doesn't want to they don't want to talk to me. They'll call me. I'm good with that. You know, I I I I can move on. I I I have I have I felt that when I move on, my whole aspect on my whole aspect on this idea that having siblings or no siblings is positive and negative. But you know, I I guess what I would have to say is always find time for yourself to sit down with your parents and have the talk because if you have to talk you are you are letting all of that energy be released and you are doing something to benefit yourself so sit down with your parents if not once a day maybe once a month 
and have the talk because you never know what may happen to your future. Thanks, Jay. I think that's a very practical bit of advice. Uh, and it's a definite change from the advice that folks usually give in these video interviews, which is typically something like, um, speak up for yourself, which, you know, is valid and a great tip. Uh, and now one that I've heard like 30 times. All right. As our time together draws to a close, I want to use this last question as space that you and I, Jay, as disabled people so rarely get. And that is space to brag about yourself, celebrate any recent wins you have or any upcoming wins, like in the short term upcoming. Uh, if you're interested in building community, where can people find you online? Uh, this is really just your chance, old friend, to be your own cheerleader. Step up on that soapbox, grab your pom-poms. Let's hear it. Well, uh, everyone, although I don't have pom-poms today because I am, I sure don't do cheerleading, um, I do, however, uh, want, here is a win I do want to share. Uh, one win that I do want to share is that, you know, it has been such an honor to work with my friend Nico, who, although has the same disability as I do, it is always a pleasure to work with him on any projects that he has coming up. Uh, I would like to also say that not only Nico has has been, not only has Nico uh, done so many talks throughout the his disabled life, but he has changed the way people look at their disability and he and I also want to thank Nico for all his hard work that he has done over the years with the CCHS community. Uh, I was really honored that he he wanted me as a representative in one of the uh, conversations about living with CCHS and being able to uh, live independent, uh, being able to handle life independently. Um, I also want to um, let people know that all I can be found on Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, not Twitter, not TikTok. Uh, I also can be found on LinkedIn. Uh, I also can be found on WhatsApp because I use WhatsApp just about every day. Uh, I'm sure that's not a social media, that's not a app that's talked about. And I also can be found on Snapchat. Uh, if you would like to connect with me, uh, I would I, I would highly recommend that you tell me your name, where you're from. And if you're on Snapchat, please uh, include the link and please send me your link and please tell me your name so that I may I make sure that it is not a spammer or a hacker in any way. Uh, if I cannot, if I cannot see that type of, if I cannot see that information, uh, I will not be able to find you or connect with you. So I would really much appreciate that. Um, if anyone has any questions or concerns or would like to have a conversation about disability life, um, please connect with me. I, I do disability story, disabled, dis, I do disability conversations uh, every day, you know, throughout the day, you know, whether you I am working or not. But um, you can also send Nico any the any questions about me as well, because I would like him to be. I would like to have him as a co-sponsor. I would like to, although I am a sponsor, I would like him to be my co-sponsor for my for my profile. So. Thank you, Nico, for having me as a as a guest on your in your series. I'm very excited to see the to hear. I'm very excited to uh, see the debut debut of your series on Monday the fifteenth, the day that my parents uh, will be celebrating their anniversary. Definitely, happy early anniversary to your parents, and thank you so much for taking part in this. It's always good to check in with you.
wherever you go, whatever you do, I'm rooting for you. And I can't wait to see what you do next. All right, take care.